we're going to take a look at another board from Keith Lohmeyer today. This one is, is an interesting little circuit design using a 555 timer and a uh, 595 shift register. So I'm thinking the way the circuit works, you press the button, the 555 timer is going to pulse the shift register and it's going to light up the LEDs. The longer you hold it, the more pulses you get. I think that's the way it's going. I notice here we also have a switch that's labeled repeat. And then there's a diode coming back through that resistor. Oh, sorry, bumped the camera. And it's going into the shifter. This is interesting. Very, very interesting. All right. Well, I got my soldering gear out. We'll put it together. And then we'll... Uh, talk a little bit more about how it works right all right I got all my parts nulled out here and I'm getting ready to start soldering it and I come across this micro USB connector surface mount oh dude Keith trying to kill me there brother all right surface mount it is All right, so I got my Optivisor on, so I can hopefully see. And we'll start putting some flux. This is Ruby Fluid. And what I want to do is just tin those pads, nothing else. Sorry, everything is so close. I don't mean to be bumping the camera, but all right, doesn't look to me like I got any bridges, which is good. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see if we can't get that in there. And then what what should we do next? We should add some more flux. Rotate that a bit so that I can see what the heck I'm doing. Let's see if we can't solder that bad boy in there. Again, pardon my head, which will probably bump something. All right. Did I get it? I gotta look over here under the light. I think I did. You know what? We'll f we will definitely uh, find out soon enough. Let me uh, let me solder these in for mechanical strength. Hopefully that's it.
All right, so everything's built, hopefully soldered correctly. This is a <clears throat> resistor array, if you've never seen one before. It's just a bunch of resistors together, and he's using that to current limit those diodes. So let's put our ICs in next. It looks like he even pre-bent the pins. Eh, no, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, pretty good. This one it needs a little bit. Come on. Now when you're inserting pins into a socket like this, you don't want <clears throat> there to be any real resistance, so. Good, got everything in. <laughs> We're certainly gonna find out, aren't we? So we need some power. Got a power bank here. micro USB cable mm -hmm. there we go Power banks aren't wonderful for this kind of work. Let me switch to something else here. Hold on. This is plugged into the computer, so the you know the power bank was switching off. This should be better. Nice. And then with this switch here, they should go back down. You don't seem to be going back down. There you go. You can see the pulsing. That time we held it long enough, we got two. A little click will give us one. Oh. <laughs> the computer did that. Sorry. Two. Let's see if we can get three. Ah, four. Let's try this. Three up. Three down, and something mm -hmm. is smoking. Looks like we might have had a little. Hmm. Oh, that's hot. It's like we might have had a short in that connector. That's my fault. That's not Keith's fault. Looky here. That hot too. A little bit. Might have just smoked that cable. Oh boy. But, nice kit. Oh yeah. That's hotter than, hotter than snot. Let's uh, see if we can figure out the circuit. I was going to reverse engineer the circuit, but as you can plainly see here, I don't have to because Keith has provided, whoops. Keith has provided us with 
stop doing that there, computer. With everything we need here. So if you look here, we can see we have our clock portion of the circuit, the power portion, and the shift register portion. So the power portion is, you know, relatively simple. We take the 5 volts in. Then we come here, you can see the clock portion. We have this set up as an A-stable multi-vibrator. Reset and VCC, or re yeah, reset and VCC are held high. Ground goes low. We have a voltage divider here and a capacitor going to ground. Pin 6 is not tied to pin 2. Yes, it is. There it is. I was confused there for a second. So that gives us an A-stable multivibrator. And then making a variable resistor here, that allows us to change the frequency from 140 to 1.4 hertz. So that would say give us about you know, 10 times, 20, 100, 100 times uh, change. Not bad. So if we come over here and we look at the uh, 595 shift register side, that clock here is always pulsing. And that is fed in here to the R clock and the S clock inputs. And then we have our button, which is basically feeding the latch, the serial. And that's allowing it to uh, fill up. Very nice design, Keith. Very well explained here. Yeah, I like this. I'm going to see if I can get this connector off of here. <laughs> Makes me wish I hadn't... Uh... hadn't soldered them down so well. All right, I got some desoldering wick here. Put some flux down. Let's see what we can do. I love a nice sizzle. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to want to come out of there or not. Might have to get the desoldering pump on this one. Let me play with that for a minute. Bumping the camera again, Paul. There we go. Got the connector off of there. It's a uh, Some more wick on them. Ah, oh, took the pads right off. Good job, Paul. All right. Okay. What I did is I scratched the, uh, the uh, solder mask off there, tinned a little piece for the negative and the positive, and hopefully we can solder on a couple wires here. Need the optimizer again. Oh, 
Sorry. Pardon the old blind man. Got the power supply set for five volts. Oh, help if I turned it on, turned the output on. <laughs> Don't know what I've done. There we go. Let's try changing our pulse time. Cool. I like it. It's a neat little kit, Keith. Nice job. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.